There's times where I would hide what I was doing, not just because I knew it was wrong, but because it was exciting. Like it was a fun thing to do. And have you ever watched one of those movies where you're rooting for the bad guys? You're rooting for the guys robbing the banks. You're rooting for the guys doing whatever. And you're like, yeah. Because it's like the thrill of them actually getting away with it. It's the thrill of like the adrenaline, the high, the, the, the split second of like, oh, they almost got caught. And it's always interesting. It's always fascinating how it breaks down. But there's a piece of that adrenaline, that high, that excitement that comes into the aspect of cheating. And so inside of that, there would be this piece that would happen of me trying to figure out how do I actually hide this because it's exciting. It's like playing espionage. It's like trying to be able to hide certain things under plain sight. Inside of all of this, it became this labyrinth of lies. Labyrinth of things I was trying to communicate to certain people so that they would believe and understand certain things while I was trying to make sure I got what I wanted in my life. That's all I cared about. But inside of this, it was me having this lie upon lie upon lie, trying to be able to hide the affairs that were happening. Trying to be able to hide the people that I was texting, the, the Snapchat, the, the messages in vanish mode, all the different things to try to be able to avoid there being any accountability, there being any like responsibility of, oh, I'm actually doing this. You see, part of me hiding the affairs and like running away from it was because it didn't really fit into my lifestyle. It didn't look like that type of guy. I didn't have that image of me being a player to other people. It's amazing. I'll put stuff up on social media and you'll get like, a, I'll get like a ton of like hate comments. Be like, doesn't look like you could get with anyone. People are crazy sometimes. I don't really care if you like me or not, but I know my life and I know what happened. And there's this piece where I was constantly trying to keep this image to look a certain way so that I could get with the people that I wanted to get with. I didn't just walk up to someone and be like, hey, I'm going to sleep with you. Like it was a slow process. It was a manipulative process. It was a slow catch of giving involved with someone emotionally to be able to connect with them on this certain level, to be able to build this safety and this trust with this person so that I could end up being with them long term. It wasn't always this conscious effort of like, hey, I see this person, I'm going to sleep with them. It was just an effort of like, I'm going to get connected. I'm going to move closer. This feels good. I'm a victim because my wife doesn't get me. This feels good. Let me move closer to this person. Let me use this person for emotional support. Oh, now we're actually getting into this affair piece, full blown. And some of the hiding was just to see what I could do. Some of the hiding was just like, can I get away with this? There's like a high and this like adrenaline piece of like, oh, this is exciting. There's also this piece of having to keep it looking a certain way to society. You see, some of the people that I cheated with were in my work environment. Or the people that I worked with on a day-to-day -day basis because I spent a lot of time with them. I spent more time with them than I did my wife. So as a result, it's easy to build these relationships, these connections, these flirty moments of just having fun with different people being like, oh, isn't this amazing? Isn't this great? And then all of a sudden, we're head over heels into a relationship. You see, the narcissist in your life, he has to hide the affairs from you so that he doesn't hurt his image. So he doesn't look bad to you. So he doesn't look bad to other people. So he doesn't look bad to society. He's trying to be able to fit into a certain mold because even though he knows and he likes what he's doing, there's also a piece that he's like, I got to be careful that I don't look like the person that I am. This is running from the piece of shame and guilt that's inside because I knew I was making bad decisions. I knew they weren't right. I knew they weren't helpful. I knew they weren't good. In the moment, I didn't care. In the moment, I didn't think about that. In the moment, that wasn't my focus. In the moment, all I cared about was me. What I wanted, how I was coming across, and what I needed to do to get what I wanted. That was it. And so that focus kept having me move towards these other people. Of like, well, this is what I want, so this is what I'm going to get. But I need to make sure I keep the image. Narcissists will hide affairs from you to maintain an image to the world, to society, and sometimes to even maintain an image to you. This is why even when you catch them in the affair, sometimes they will still never admit it. 
never actually tell you and explain and show you the truth, giving you any type of quote unquote closure because you actually understand what's going on. And instead, they just move forward. They'll hide affairs from you so that they feel better about themselves. This is why sometimes you will never get him to actually admit that he's been having an affair. Even if you have pictures, even if you have proof, even if you have a private eye, won't even matter. He still won't actually admit it. Because if he admits it, then he has to be wrong. If he admits it, then it actually has to have happened. Instead, he's living in a fantasy of it didn't actually happen. It's not actually real. That doesn't exist. This is why the majority of narcissists compartmentalize. They box stuff up and they push it to the side so they don't have to deal with it in the moment. The thing you need to understand is you were inside one of those boxes. He has a special box with your name with your family, with your kids inside of that box and slides it to the side and says, hey, that's them, no big deal, they're over there. Right now, they're just in a box, they don't exist. Hey, a fair partner, let me be with you. And he does this so he doesn't have to feel bad about himself. He abuses you so he doesn't have to feel bad about himself. He degrades you so he doesn't have to feel bad about himself. So he can continue to hide the affairs and continue to feel like he's a good guy. Image is one of the biggest pieces that narcissists are trying to be able to maintain. Not because they love themselves so much, but because they're trying to avoid the shame and the guilt of who they actually are. So like, well, maybe if I put on a mask, I'll look better. Maybe if I give this a fresh coat of paint, I'll look better. Maybe, and all these things come up of like, let me sell an image to other people so they don't see what's actually inside. Narcissists are running from that. The shame and the guilt of who they actually are. A lot of times people are like, narcissists don't have shame. Narcissists don't have guilt. What are you talking about? They do, but it's very quick and it's very microscopic. It's like guilt, done. It's boxed up. It's pushed away. And as narcissists get older and older, the guilt becomes less and less because they've learned to be able to control it, compartmentalize it, and shove it to the side. Shame is still a big piece that's underlying the majority of narcissism. It's like the raging river that's happening that the narcissist is like dangling over being like, nope, can't do this. Let me punch someone else so that I feel better about myself. And they fall into the water, so at least I don't. Narcissists are running away from shame, even if that means they're running over you in the process because they don't care. They just care, how do I avoid this exposure piece? How do I avoid being hurt with shame? How do I avoid feeling this way? So narcissists are continually trying to move past this piece of shame, not letting it touch him, not letting it control him, because if it does, he'd have to be vulnerable. He'd have to be honest. This is one of the hardest things. The narcissist is always running away from honesty, which is why he's not going to be honest to you about the affairs. He's already come up with his story. He's already come up with his version of reality. And he's typically never going to tell you that truth. Because then he'd have to look like the bad guy. Do you see how a lot of it still comes back to him? Still comes back to his image? Still comes back to his feelings? Still comes back to what he wants in the moment? Do you see this? Because it's so easy for people to get confused and to get lost in this. And they're like, oh, but it's happening. It's about him. And that's it. Narcissus is going to keep hiding affairs from you to make you feel crazy because you'll keep having to go on the detective route and trying to figure it out, thinking and hoping and praying that you get quote unquote closure from him actually admitting the fact that he cheated. If he knows that the big reason that you're going to leave is if he cheats, he'll never let you know that he cheats. If he knows that that's the one thing that you're looking for, he'll never give it to you. He'll never give you the honesty. He'll never give you the truthfulness, the transparency. He won't give it to you because he knows that's what you want. So you need to understand a narcissist is going to do this over and over and over, hiding stuff even under plain sight to try to make you feel crazy to try to get away with it, to try to keep his image, and to try to avoid shame. If you're struggling right now because he's been cheating on you over and over and over again, please reach out for help. There's a couple of mistakes a lot of times people make when they're dealing with a narcissist that I want you to avoid and be able to move forward in the healing process. Go to rawmotivations.com slash breakthrough today.